Hmm. Well, that wasn't very nice. Huh. I wonder why they would act like... Oh, hey. Welcome back. You guys are back already. I've missed you. I'm excited to share our next couple chapters with you. As you can remember, we are working on David Williams, the Ice Monster. Now, we are on chapters five and six today. Make sure you pay close attention to the story because, as always, you're going to have to answer questions after the story. Let's get started. Chapter 5, Universe of Wonder. As an urchin, Elsie was always on the outside, looking in. Every day she would see a whole other London whirling around her, horse-drawn carriages speeding down the street, children in uniform marching off to school, lords and ladies stepping over her as they left the Royal Opera House. Elsie's brain was forever buzzing with questions. Where was everyone going at such a pace? What did those scrumptious looking cakes in the bakery window actually taste like? And what was inside all those magnificent buildings? One day, the girl decided to step out of her world and into the other. Elsie was standing in front of the most magnificent building of all, the Natural History Museum. When she tried to walk in, she was immediately thrown out by an hobnailed, booted brute of a security guard, Mr. Clout. I don't want no trouble from filthy beggars like you, he shouted as he hurled her down the steps. Elsie was not one to give up that easily, so she sneaked in behind a gaggle of top-hatted gentlemen. At once the girl marveled at this universe of wonder. The museum was a treasure trove of life-sized models of wells, stuffed animals, dinosaur bones, meteorites, precious stones, dusty old books full of beautiful pictures of animals from far-off lands, wood carvings of prehistoric men, and floor-to-ceiling paintings of creatures that had long since been extinct. Soon she was sneaking into the museum every single day. Elsie couldn't read, but she earwigged in the guides and became something of an expert. So when she saw a picture of the ice monster on the front page of the newspaper, she knew instantly that it was, in fact, a woolly mammoth. Elsie had learned that these creatures had lived during the ice age, when saber-toothed giant tigers, giant bears, sloths, and beavers stalked the earth, and birds like the Teriotonus, a bird bigger than a person, darkened the skies. Elsie was desperate to follow the story of the ice monster, so every morning she swiped another newspaper to search for news of the creature. Weeks passed, and then one day she spotted a jumble of letters she recognized on the front page of a newspaper. They looked exactly like the ones she'd seen in the side of her favorite building. Ice monster coming to Natural History Museum. Elsie knew she had to meet it. Giant Ghosts. Soon after the ice monster was found, London was plunged into the cruelest of winters. A bitter wind brought a flurry of snow. Before long, the entire city was hushed by a thick covering of white. The River Thames froze over. In this kind of weather, Homeless children like Elsie perished in doorways. They would go to sleep and never wake up, to be found at dawn with a dusting of frost on their faces. Poor Elsie was huddling in her tin bath under a pile of newspapers, trying to keep warm. She looked at her hands. They were shaking with the cold and turning blue. The girl almost missed Wormley Hall. Almost, but not quite. Elsie sneaked into the Natural History Museum at closing time, behind a troop of nuns, so the security guard wouldn't see her. Once inside, she scuttled along the long corridors, past the dinosaur bones hanging on wires and that looked like giant ghosts, and eventually found an unlocked locked cupboard. She crept inside and closed the door. It was a cleaning cupboard, and too small in which to sleep lying down, so she slept standing up with her head nestled between some mops. She looked, like a, uh, uh, she looked not unlike a mop, as skinny as a rake, with a shock of tangled hair on top. 
Elsie was sure no one would find her in here, but she was wrong. Very early the next morning before dawn, Elsie was woken by a cleaning lady opening the cupboard door. The woman yawned and grabbed the first mop she could find. It was actually Elsie. Ah! Screamed the lady. Ah! Screamed the girl. Elsie was being held by the neck. You're not a mop, said the lady. No, I'm a girl. What are you doing in my cleaning cupboard? I was sleeping. I didn't want to die of the cold. No, you don't want to do that. Elsie gulped. Are, are you going to tell on me, Mrs.? The cleaning lady did the last thing the girl was expecting. She smiled. Most of the time, grown-ups treated urchins like Elsie with cruelty. Not this lady. She was different. No, you're not going to tell on me, are you? asked the lady. Tell on you, replied the girl. Elsie was befuddled. I could lose my job over this. No, 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 never. I'm not a snitch. Well, thank goodness for that. Me neither. What's your name? Elsie. Oh, I'm Dottie. Dottie by name, and I'm told Dottie by nature. Are you a child? The girl was confused. She thought that was obvious. Yes. I only ask because you're t you are taller than m me. You are, I, I only ask because you are taller than me, gentleman friend. How tall is he? Ah, Titch is shorter than you. That isn't his real name. That's the name all the soldiers gave him. How old is he? Seventy-three. Has he shrunk? Nope. God made him that way. Dottie pulled out a dog-eared photograph from her pocket. Here's Titch. Elsie looked at the picture. It must have been taken a while ago, as it showed a young soldier in uniform holding a gun that was taller than him. He is small, remarked the girl. He's bigger in real life than the photograph. I guessed that, Elsie replied. He's my hero, said Dottie as she kissed the picture before putting it back in her pocket. So I bet you're hungry. The girl nodded her head. Ravenous. Elsie was always so hungry, her tummy hurt. Dottie reached into her another pocket. Here, yeah, have me packed lunch. Bread and dripping. Smiling, Elsie took the food. She tore the crust of bread into halves and handed a piece back to the lady. Both were touched by the kindness of the other. Elsie devoured her half greedily. It was only bread and dripping, but to her it was the nectar of the gods. Uh, where's your mom and dad, little one? Don't know. Never met them. Orphan, then, are you? Suppose so. Poor thing. There was no point feeling sorry for myself. I gotta get on with it. At that moment, they both heard bootsteps clomping down the corridor. Click, clack, click, clack, click, clack. The lady lifted her finger to her lips to mime, don't say a word, and hurriedly shut the door. All right, that is the end of chapters five and six. Now remember, you're gonna be answering your questions. At the end, make sure you click submit. And don't forget, always use those complete sentences when you're answering the questions. No one word or two word answers. You've always got to start with a capital and you've always got to end with a period for it to be a complete sentence. Of course, you have to have more than one word as well. All right, guys, that does it for today. So we will see you tomorrow for chapters seven and eight. Have a great rest of your day. And remember, click submit. Have a good day, guys.